What's up YouTube? In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to set images that bleed all the way to the edge of our screen or edge of our container without having to use absolute positioning. So we can adjust our grid gap, everything stays lined up. We can adjust our containers max width, the user can adjust their font size, and everything's just going to stay anchored to our container. So let's get started. So let's start with a basic example of this using Flexbox. I have our structure built out, but completely unstyled. So we'll start with the section and we'll give it some top and bottom padding to separate it from other sections. It'll be 100% width and overflow hidden to crop off excess content. And then we'll apply some bottom border, one pixel, and I'll remove this color so this inherits from body font color. Inside of that, we have the container. I'm gonna give that 100% width of available space. And then we'll go ahead and give it a max width of 1280. So if I set this to 1280 divided by 16 EM, notice that max width kicks in. We'll give it margin auto to keep it centered and we'll give it a little bit of padding on the sides to prevent the content from touching edge of screen. So we have that set up there. We're gonna head over to our layout div. This is going to be 100% width of its parent and it'll be flexed to align to center and justify to space apart and will allow wrapping for mobile. Inside that layout div, we have our columns. Those are gonna be 50% the width of their parent. And inside this column, we have this text wrapper here. I'm gonna give it some right padding of 2EM to separate the text from the image. And then we'll select the image inside this column, give it 100% width and no max width in case we ever want to make it wider than its parent. So when we come down to tablet, we're gonna reduce the padding on our container to something like 1.5 on the sides. And then when we head down to mobile uh, sort of landscape, we're gonna select our columns and make them 100% width so they stack under each other. We want some space between the columns here, so we'll head back to desktop, select the layout div, and apply gap to the rows of 2EM. So once they stack like this, that gap will be added between them. And I'm also just gonna select this text wrapper and zero out that padding, don't need that anymore. And that translates down to mobile nicely. So next we're gonna add some guidelines so we can see clearly where the edges of our container and columns are. I'm duplicating this section and changing the class on this one to have a class of guides. It's gonna be 100% width of its parent and position fixed to the top of the screen, 100 VH height and a negative one Z index so it sits underneath everything else. I want the container to be as tall as this guides div. So I'll apply flex to stretch it out and now the container is full height. Um, we also have this layout div we want to be full height. So again, I'm gonna give the uh, container a class of his guides and apply flex to stretch. And now this layout div is also full height. So we have our columns here. We don't need any content in them since we're just using these for guides. And I'll give them a combo of his guides. So I can uh, do, uh, delete that column and then make a copy of the first. They should both have that combo. So they're gonna be 100% height and I'm gonna use sort of outline instead of border because I don't want this to affect the width any. We're gonna add an outline of 1.5 and a color of white. And then we'll do the same thing to our container where we apply an outline, 1.5 and color of yellow. So now we can clearly see the edges of our container and of our columns. Next, let's set up our section where the image is gonna go full bleed to the edge of the screen. So I'll duplicate this section and here we have the second one. What needs to happen is we need to take our layout div and move it outside of our container. So this always spans full width of edge of screen. Even on much larger screen sizes, this image is going all the way to the edge. So inside the layout div, we have our two columns that are 50% width each, but we need to contain this text some kind of way. So we're basically gonna take our container and put it inside of our text column, put the text inside that container. And now this container at least has the padding we need, but it's not lining up with the other one. So we're gonna give it a combo class of is half width, and we're gonna take the max width of 80 EMs, divide that by two to have a 40 EM max width. It's exactly half the size of the main container. And then we can just take this margin auto here and zero that out so that this perfectly anchors to the correct side. We have a little bit of extra padding on this side that we don't need since our text wrapper has this padding here instead. Uh, so what we're gonna do is give this sort of a combo of is pad right zero, and we'll use that to basically zero out this right padding. And then this is perfectly lining up with the other container there. So now all we need to do is take this entire section and duplicate it, and we'll look at the reverse of this. So if we just reverse the column order, 
we need to account for this one. So we're going to make a new class called is pad left zero. And we're basically going to take that and zero out this left padding instead of the right one, and then zero out this margin. So all that's perfectly lining up. Our padding is synced up there. So we're going to take this text wrapper and give it a class of is invert it. And we'll use that to add the 2EM padding to this side instead of this side. So that's all good to go. And it respects sort of user font size preference. If the user scales everything down, bumps it up. Um, this is all linked up with all the other containers. Now, when we head down to tablet, we're going to need to leave everything the same here because the layout's still good. Um, but this is where we're changing the layout on the mobile portrait. So things are stacking under each other, which means we need to adjust sort of our container here. So I'm going to select our container. I'm going to change it back to its original max width. So 80 M's. Just that way, if the user ever changes their font size preference, this container is perfectly lined up with our main container again. So I'll add that combo back on, and we're going to add this padding back in to the side of the container. So that's working out good there. And then when we head over to this one here, uh, we need to do sort of the same thing. So text wrapper, we need to zero out this padding. And then on the container itself, we need to add in this padding again to keep everything synced up. And now this is fully responsive, uh, respects user preference, and our containers are all sort of working good together all the way over. So the one other thing I want to cover for this version is sometimes you'll have an image that you want to extend past the container, but only by a little bit. So we see this with uh, sort of laptop mockups sometime or things like that, where you won't be seeing all of it till you reach that container max width and then you see the rest of the image. So to do that, I'm just taking this image and increasing its percentage width so it extends past sort of its column here. And if we were to preview that, we'll notice that for the most part, the image is extending past the container. And then once we reach our container max width, we're sort of just revealing the rest of the image there. So let's set up a better version using CSS Grid. We have our same section element and then our same container with the 80 max width, five padding, and then 1.5 padding on tablet. So we have a new layout div inside and we're gonna give this 100% width of its parent and we're gonna apply grid this time. We'll let the rows be auto-generated. We'll set the gap to 4M and then the row gap to 2M and we'll align to center like so. And then here on tablet, we'll just go ahead and remove one of the columns and let it be full width. So this gap this time is being applied with grid instead of padding on the text wrapper. That means it's evenly distributed between the two columns here. And we'll, let's go ahead and set this up where we have a full width section now. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this and we'll open this section up. We'll take the layout div outside of the section. And if we go to sort of a much larger screen size, we'll notice this image is going past the edge of the container, which is great but we still need this text to be contained some kind of way. So I'll go ahead and drop a container in here and I'll put the text inside of it. So now we have that contain. I'm gonna switch the order for this example just for now. So we need this container to basically stay within sort of the width of the main container here. So we're gonna give this a combo this time of is half width again. And watch what happens if we try and set the width in half. So 40 instead of 80 on that max width. And we'll also go ahead and zero out sort of the auto margins. So you'll notice this is peeking out past the edge of the main container. And the reason for that is we have this sort of grid gap here. And it's set to four M's. And that's being shared between the two columns. So if we split that gap in half to two M's, that would means we need to subtract two M's from the max width of this container. So it would be 38 M instead. And now it perfectly lines up. We'd also need to remove this sort of left padding here. So that way this aligns with the edge of that and get everything synced up again. You know, this was really tedious when we had to add the padding back in, add the margins back in on mobile and reset everything to the way it was. So instead of applying these settings here, I'm going to apply them to an embed on the page. And what we're gonna do is use this embed here inside of a media query. So this is only gonna apply these styles on desktop and that way we don't have to reset everything on mobile. So we'll give our is half width class a margin of zero to remove our auto margin. And then we'll give it sort of a max width of 38 EM to keep it contained. And if we save that, this is perfectly synced up. 
So now we're just gonna add a combo of is pad left zero, and we'll use that combo to zero out that left padding, but only on desktop. So we can set padding left to zero EM, save that, and now this padding is zeroed out uh, for this version on the container. Now we can go ahead and just duplicate our section, and for this one, we're gonna go ahead and switch sort of the order of our content here. We need to give this one sort of a different class of is pad right zero, and we'll use that to basically have auto margin on the side to anchor it over and to adjust the padding. So we can open up our embed. We'll set is pad right zero to a margin left of auto, and we can save that. And then we also need to set it to a padding right of zero, and we can save that. So now these styles are only being applied on desktop, and we head to the tablet. We don't have to do anything extra to add that padding back in, so it respects the padding that was set on our base class, meaning if we decide to change the padding on this base class to be something different, we don't have to readjust it for all of these ones where we manually overrid the padding. So we can adjust our padding freely, and everything stays linked up. But if we were to ever change sort of the max width on our container, notice how the smaller container is starting to overflow now. Or if we were just to change sort of the grid gap instead, and maybe we make this something like 8M instead. Notice how this container is still starting to overflow. So our formula for the width of this container is to take half the width of the main container minus half of the grid gap. So let's figure that out to set it up dynamically instead of having to readjust that every time. So I'll remove the max width from my container and I'll set that with code instead. So we'll save these sizes as variables. That way we can reuse them in different places. So on the HTML element, I'm gonna create a variable called container width. So it can be applied to anything inside the HTML element. I'm gonna give it a value of 80M. And then we'll go ahead and create another variable called column gap. And we're gonna go ahead and set that to 4M for now. So now we just need to choose where we want to apply those values. So my layout div has a grid column gap of 4M. I'm gonna use the variable we created here. So we'll just use var, and then we'll copy this column gap variable and just throw that in here. And then we wanna do the same thing for sort of our container max width. We wanna pull that from the container max width variable and just plug that in here. So now when we set the max width on our small container, we can do that using a calculation. So normally for CSS calc, we would do something like 80M divided by two minus 4M divided by two. So container width divided by two minus the column gap divided by two. And we can just plug in those variables dynamically. So we'll add that in here and then we'll copy the column gap and add that in here. So the max width on this small container will be dynamic based on the max width and column gap we have applied to our elements. And just to visualize that, I've added some controls that you can test around with the live site to see how this affects the layout when we change grid gap and container max width. Final piece to this, what if we want this image, we'll give a class of is large to maybe go all the way to the edge of our container but not past it. Well, this image is 100% width, the space available in the grid, and then our container has some padding of 5M. So we'll apply this on desktop only. It'll be image with the class of is large, and we'll go ahead and set its width to sort of a calculation. So we'll apply a calc width of 100% plus a 5EM, which is the space of our sort of padding in our container. And now this image goes all the way to the edge of the container and that'll work perfectly regardless of the screen size. If we wanted to make that a bit more dynamic, we could even set up a variable for container padding and set that to 5M and that way we only have to change it in one place. So we do something like container and set its padding left and right to our variable. And then we can also use that variable in our calculation. So updating container padding in one place also updates this piece here. So that wraps up how to control the way images bleed to the edge of the container or even past it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one.